Hey guys, let's talk about Tiger and Bunny. And that still does not quite roll off my tongue the right way because, man, I just never liked this title. It's what turned me off from watching the show for so long. Uh, you see, I am as unbiased a reviewer as you're going to find once I start watching the show. But until then... Um, I will hold every preconception imaginable. And in the case of Tiger and Bunny, it just kind of sounded like there was this strong Tiger character and this weak Bunny character. But the weak Bunny character teaches this badass Tiger character how to be more emotionally open and how to love everyone around him. And that did not seem like it was up my alley at all, so I just kind of ignored the show, despite a lot of positive reviews coming out back when the show was airing. Well, finally, I was watching Netflix the other day, thinking of like, okay, what, what should I watch before I cancel my subscription? And I finally came across Tiger and Bunny, thought maybe I should give it a shot. So here's what you have. It's a 25-episode superhero anime, like many action shows of this approximate length. First, uh, first third of the show is just character introductions, very episodic in nature. Uh, middle arc, they finally uh, get a little more continuous, they throw in a character, like an enemy character who's much stronger than anyone up to that point. Then uh, the final third of the show, they really get to the main boss, they resolve all the conflicts, they uncover the conspiracies and all that. So um, this show very much follows that format. Um, the first third of the show, when they have all the character introductions, you get to know Tiger and Bunny a bit, and some of the other superheroes they work with. Um, I didn't quite get what they were going for with the Tiger and Bunny pairing here. It was different than my misconception of, you know, one guy being really strong one by guy really being weak but um, usually when you have a partner team that uh, does not get along it's either because they are completely opposite or because they are very similar in ways that rub each other the wrong way but in the case of Tiger and Bunny it was neither of those and I never quite got what was going on they just seem to be on different wavelengths um, and I never really understood why the show tried to make them into a particular pairing. But they were, and, you know, it is what it is. Nothing really great in the first third of the show, but nothing really bad either. Just the show being an action comedy and thinking it was a little bit funnier than it actually was. But we are all guilty of that. I'm not going to throw stones here. Um, middle of the show. This is where they finally get a, a much, much stronger boss character to face up against, and... It could have been great, it should have been great, but the show made the mistake of thinking it was a lot more clever than it actually was. And they had an enemy with a perfectly interesting superpower, and you know, you have to think, okay, how are you going to fight this? How are you going to um, figure out what his power is? And the show dropped a lot of unnecessary hints when you already kind of figured out what the powers were and how to counteract them. Um, it prolonged the reveal because it thought you hadn't figured it out yet, even though you probably had. And if you hadn't, you at least had a good theory going. So the show, uh, it, little, it stumbled a bit there, but it overall was still pretty good. Then you get to the final arc. And in the final arc, things uh, really pick up a lot more. There's a little bit of a time skip, and uh, the characters face some interesting conflicts at this point. Um, the main enemy's power is an interesting one, one that I have never seen as, like, the main bad guy's power before. Then again, I'm not that much of a superhero guy, but it was interesting to watch. The biggest flaw with the final arc is that the character designs basically gave away who the bad guys were, and I hate it when shows do that. You can draw bad guys looking just like anyone else, make them less conspicuous, but when from the character designs you can tell who is evil almost immediately, you're just wasting everyone's time. So that's a big flaw of the show, but otherwise it is pretty good in that final arc. Anyway, overall, I would give the show a single plus. It's certainly not bad. It is enjoyable. Just uh, don't expect too much from it. There is uh, supposed to be a second season, I believe, coming out next year. Um, if you are thinking about watching the show, perhaps do not watch it yet. Just wait until the second season comes out and see how well that gets reviewed. Maybe it'll be a step above the first season. Maybe it won't be. But that's at least a safe bet. Wait until that one's over and see what people think of it. I'll probably watch it and let you know what's going on several years too late. Anyway, that's all for now. See you next time.